Now that the dust has settled in what was a wild, wacky, wet, whatever you want to call it, free agency period. Yeah, now that it's all settled, let's look at the number one move from every team in the NFC and how it's going to actually impact fantasy football. We could discuss that as well. And let's start with Deontay Johnson. This wasn't a free agency signing, but it happened during that period. And it was a trade to the Panthers. We heard these rumors a couple of weeks ago that Deontay wanted out of there. Maybe there was some stuff behind the scenes, not mixing with him in Pittsburgh. We saw some of that frustration on the field last year. And now I think he actually, after you think about it a little bit, I think he's in a favorable spot in Carolina. And you might be saying, how is that possible based on how Bryce Young and this offense looked last year? But a lot of things have changed there. As you can see, I put this out on Twitter or X. There's a lot of upgrades for this offense, specifically the second year quarterback in Bryce Young. It starts with getting a wide receiver who can get open. And we'll show you just exactly how he does that shortly in Deontay Johnson. They got an innovative new coach in Dave Canales, who the last two years has revived Geno Smith's career, got him paid a big contract relative to what he was getting, and then got Baker Mayfield a revived career last year and a nice new contract in Tampa Bay in this free agency period and then also getting Robert Hunt one of the biggest offensive linemen on the market for Miami and Damian Lewis this is an improved offensive line and offense and coaching staff now for Bryce Young and the Panthers and if Bryce Young does take that step forward in any way if Dave Canales can build an offense around him like he did with Geno to his strengths and definitely Baker Mayfield to his strengths that's going to benefit one Deontay Johnson and for what it's worth even if this offense doesn't skyrocket forward you just have Deontay with not a lot of competition here it's a third 33 and a half year old Adam Thielen, who for the first three to four weeks last year, maybe the first six weeks was really popping off in Carolina. And then the long season on an older body and defenses realized what was happening there in the inside slot part of the field. Other than that, Jonathan Mingo was not great his rookie year. DJ Shark is what he is, a field stretcher, not really going to steal the targets that Deontay has. Deontay is going to be able to work in the slot, but also out wide now, probably more so than he did in Pittsburgh. We go from Carolina to Chicago and Chicago made a couple of big splashes, but probably the biggest one was was go ahead in another trade here getting Keenan Allen for a fourth round pick from the Chargers now the biggest concern for Keenan Allen is that he is 31 years old and very soon and maybe by the time you're watching this he's going to turn 32 at the end of April but here's the thing he has shown an elite ability still at this age to get open and no signs of slowing down because Keenan ranked 11th in wide receiver efficiency in 2023 earning 11 and a half targets per game now although he hasn't shown any signs of dropping off he is still 32 and he has battled injuries the last few years he missed four games last year with an injury the season before that he missed seven games with an injury and was on the injury report for the large majority of that season but the good news for Keenan is that he's not really going to have to be that guy now like maybe Mike Williams was a little bit of that guy at times for the Chargers but it was always Keenan Allen drawing the most attention from opposing defenses and now that's easily in my opinion going to be DJ Moore getting that attention as he'll line up as the X wide receiver a lot more meaning that Keenan Allen even if he starts to slow down a little bit which who knows if he will at age 32 it'll be against weaker competition in the slot or cornerback twos from the other team now one team that really hasn't done much especially on offense for fantasy football this offseason and it's kind of getting drummed up a lot especially where I live in Texas and that is Dallas the Dallas Cowboys really didn't do anything you could argue that their biggest move and it probably was was re-signing one of their running backs they let Tony Pollard go they have not yet re-signed or really reached out to Michael Gallup as of this recording was re-signing another running back though Enrico Dottle who agrees to a one-year deal worth 1.25 million dollars total and when you dive in a little deeper to their actual moves on offense that was their only move it literally dates back until the summer when they signed somebody else or re-signed somebody else now Donald was nice last year he actually averaged 4.8 yards per touch he was more efficient than one Tony Pollard but this money of just 1.2 million dollars when a lot of running backs in this free agency period with the inflated cap being higher than what people expected running backs are signing for eight million dollars a year ten million dollars a year yeah this is not going to uh, secure him a starting spot by any means but on on paper as of right now he is probably the running back one second year running back Deuce Vaughn who's only like 160 170 pounds sure he was pretty electric in college but in general probably not going to be the guy either the Cowboys are linked though with a couple of rookies and one big one and that big one is Jonathan Brooks in Texas who ended up tearing his ACL his final year of college he's a RB1 on a lot of boards for teams if you're not following he didn't participate at the combine because of that torn ACL but the Cowboys doctor their team doctor is the one who did the surgery and their doctor's looked after Jonathan Brooks so they have the best information out of any team out there about how he is healing and it seems like there's an, a connection here he's a Texas back UT looks like if he's there in say round three Dallas could be taking a step now we head to Detroit and the biggest move the Lions made was just beefing up and continuing to have a strong offensive line they brought back one of their own and Graham Glasslow he signed a three-year deal worth up to 20 million dollars in extension and then they also brought in Kevin Zeitler for 12.67 million on average they ended up foregoing and not paying 
getting, say, Robert Hunt instead, who's getting $20 million a year. So it looks like the Lions, once again, they didn't make a big splash in free agency here. Last year, they got like a David Montgomery, no big splash either. But they're just getting players that fit their offense at a nice value and this is something that is not going to make a lot of headlines but I think it's very intriguing because this is now two to three years in a row that they're quietly just winning and building strong in the offseason even last year getting guys in the NFL draft that people were a little bit sketchy on and then those proved to be right as well for what it's worth Glasgow was a must to bring back he was top five in run blocking grades in 2023 and the move to just make sure the offensive line is still great and awesome obviously helps a pocket quarterback in Jared Goff who does need time really struggles to extend plays on his own but it's definitely going to be helping these running backs Jameer Gibbs who started to come out at the second half of the year and he doesn't really need offensive line play as much it'll help him but he can create on his own it's really going to help David Montgomery especially within that 10 yard line when he's trying to secure touchdowns like he did last year but just in general as somebody who struggled to pick up a lot of yards before contact last year and just to make that last point a little bit clearer he struggled to create yards before contact on his own independent of the offensive line in Tampa Bay their biggest move was that they brought back Mike Evans was it going to be the franchise tag he didn't want that no he gets a nice two-year deal maybe and probably finishes his career in Tampa now the concern is that Mike Evans before the season starts in late August will turn 31 years old and usually once wide receivers get to this age we saw it with really everybody Andre Johnson Julio Jones once he got there you start to quickly and rapidly maybe fall off but there's been no signs of that for Mike Evans last year when he was 30 because as you can see right here he was 11th in expected points added that's EPA it's just an efficiency stat and maybe that's not your favorite efficiency stat well then let's go up to yards per route run another efficiency stat he was 13 so he was borderline at top 10 wide receiver in terms of efficiency and this all played out in his production he stayed healthy he played all 17 games and when you look at his overall stats he goes out there on 135 targets at age 30 goes for a over 1,200 yards, that's a, what, three-year high for sure. It's a four, it's a five, it's a six-year high with Baker Mayfield, by the way, and former coach Dave Canales. And then he goes out there and he gets 13 touchdowns, a three-year high. Not only that, but Evans led the NFL in air yards and deep targets of 20-plus. He really fit well with Baker Mayfield, who loves throwing the ball to the sidelines downfield. And Dave Canales, the former offensive coordinator here, now the coach of the Panthers, realized this and just played into that strength and basically spam button those deep shots to Mike Evans. And that is really important. It might seem crazy to say but maker baker mayfield re-signing here for three years 100 million dollars he's getting 50 million half of that and guaranteed he called it himself life-changing money this is massive you might not be saying oh baker coming back is massive for mike evans no there wasn't a great quarterback market they weren't getting Kirk cousins they weren't in a position to draft one of the quarterbacks in the draft the one of the top three four maybe even five guys they needed baker back and we'll see what happens now without dave canales there that is going to be a big question is he still going to be the same guy with a different offensive coordinator i will surely be trapped that now let's move to the Rams their number one ad similar to the Lions just beefing up that offensive line and really improving their offensive line the Lions was already good the Rams was not good last year for one Matt Stafford and more specifically you can see right here the Rams ranked 20th overall in pass protection and this was something that was even worse at the beginning of the year when Matthew Stafford was actually out there and healthy and the dude is only getting older he's dealt with so many injuries over the past three to four years alone that have almost forced him to retire retire early in his career because of this they need to beef up this offensive line they also got some tight ends as well who can help block and the specific pieces that they added they added the big one was probably jonah jackson he signs a three-year deal worth 51 million dollars and then kevin dotson a three-year deal worth 48 million dollars they brought in these guards overall they have a couple of tackles that they are working with as well on their offensive line and that they still have there so i think that this is going to be you would hope an improved offensive line both jonah jackson and kevin dotson were in the top half of the league in pass protection for guards they weren't elite by any means but they were not bad they were just basically top half of the league a little bit above average and it is crazy that these days in the nfl when you are a little bit above average at your position you get 15 million dollar contracts as an offensive lineman and even heck as a wide receiver now the eagles let deandre swift walk but they upgraded him to one saquon barkley and this transaction to me speaks volumes because the eagles over the last five to ten years they're a very analytical team they're known for not spending or signing money on or spending money on running backs get your late round running backs like a kenny game well they've done recently trade for them a late draft pick like they did last year with the De deandre swift and just roll with that but they threw that all out the window for Saquon Barkley which again speaks volumes because they gave him a big contract the most guaranteed money on the free agency period 
went to Saquon Barkley. He gets $25.5 million. I believe this was by far, like maybe $10 million more guaranteed than any other running back got. And I like Spot Track here on Twitter because they basically say, hey, there's a lot of stuff going out there in the contract world. Let's just break it down to what this stuff actually means when all these incentives and, and uh, stuff for the cap and just kind of write offs, what this all means. He says it's basically a two year deal or $26 million. Obviously, there's that third year in there, but they can kind of let him go at that point. But this is a two year deal you should view this as worth $26 million. $13 million a year. That's an increase of his, what, $10.5, $11 million contract he signed last year for one year with the Giants. This is good for Saquon, and it's good, in my opinion, really good for the Eagles. Because now this tells me that Saquon is definitely going to be a three down back, and that might seem obvious, but when the Eagles, a team that does not invest in running back, says you, you are the Christian McCaffrey that the 49ers went out and traded a boatload for a couple years ago. You are the difference maker running back that we want in our offense. Now, I've already seen a lot of people say, but what about the tush push? He's not going to get any touchdowns. I do think the tush push is still going to happen, even without Jason Kelsey. I saw some questions there about that but Saquon is still going to get his whether it's touchdowns outside the goal line the one inch line where there's going to be that touch push there's going to be a lot of them coming from five yards out whether it's ones coming from 20 plus yards out because he was explosive and also let's just take a look at one thing last year the Eagles running backs combined for 10 touchdowns and none of them were as good as Saquon Barkley and if you look a year before that you have Miles Sanders having an 11 touchdown year but also in that season Kenny Gamel had four touchdowns Boston Scott had three that is 18 touchdowns from the Eagles running backs two years ago and 10 last year yeah I think Saquon Barkley will be fine even if he has a say down year of eight rushing touchdowns and two or three receiving so Saquon leaves New York well what do they have there it was like Gary Brightwell Matt Breida at times who's their running back well the Giants went out and signed Devin Singletary and they gave him a pretty dang good deal look Devin Singletary was great during the second half of the year last year he was great in the Texans first playoff game he gets almost 10 million dollars in guaranteed money and look at this I mean this is crazy Saquon gets more than about 11 million dollars more than the next closest running back I mean that's probably how it should be based on these skills sets but Singletary also getting paid that is a reasonable contract a decent size one to say that yeah he's probably the starter in New York Singletary came in on a one-year deal to Houston last year and he beat out Damian Pierce midway through the season for the job and over the final 11 games and then in the postseason he averaged nearly 20 opportunities per game he was their workhorse back and as of right now this guy is no competition I don't even think Matt Breed is on the updated roster as of this talking you have Gary Brightwell nothing crazy there you have Eric Gray a running back that I believe they took last year nothing crazy there and like we've already talked about the running back draft class you might not see a running back go until the third round maybe one or two go in the second but the third round and if that's the case yeah you're really not going to see a lot of competition for Singletary and if you want to break this down one step even further these are the Giants draft picks as of right now of course trades can and will happen we'll see if the Giants are involved in any of those they have a first round pick sixth overall they're not spending that on a running back they have a second round pick 47th overall they're probably not spending that on a running back when they have a lot of other team needs and then you have the third round pick pick 70 maybe that's where you start to see them spend the pick on a running back either this third round pick pick 70 if Singletary avoids that which is not even that crazy of a draft pick but that guy will be used if he's taken in the third round if he avoids that and you don't get a running back taken until the fourth fifth or sixth yeah I think Singletary is going to be the guy here but we're not going to know until the end of April but what we do know is that Austin Eckler has joined the commander's backfield and he is an upgrade in this backfield because out goes Antonio Gibson we talked about him in the AFC vi version of this video the number one move for every team in the AFC how it impacts fantasy he went to the New England Patriots that's Antonio Gibson now you have Austin Eckler filling in this is an upgrade this is more competition for Brian Robinson and heck Austin Eckler might even be the starting running back and I know it wasn't great last year that might sound crazy to say but he's a more versatile back and I get it Eckler wasn't great last year it wasn't the Eckler that we're used to but he didn't have a great offensive line he lost his center and his quarterback during the season and he even dealt with an ankle injury early on for five to six plus weeks because if you just look at the hard stats yes his efficiency dropped because of all those reasons I just mentioned but in 2021 2022 this guy was going off for 900 plus rushing yards and 600 plus receiving you're talking about 15 to 1600 total yards not only that I mean the 18 20 touchdowns that's great the offense obviously took a hit overall in uh, Los Angeles with the Chargers last year but this was the big one receptions go from 70 to 107 to just 51 receptions obviously missing games as you can see right here he played his fewest games in the past three to four years that's going to impact your receptions totals but his receptions per game even went down I think all this factors in when you have a rookie a or a backup quarterback in the game you have a backup center in the game which kind of hurts your guy who's in there as well at the quarterback position and you have injuries I don't think this is the final form of Austin Eckler this past year I don't think we're going to get a repeat of that I think we're going to get a healthier more motivated Austin Eckler in a new environment and speaking 
speaking of a new environment, that's exactly what we get for Josh Jacobs, who's probably the Packers' new workhorse back. When you look at this right here from Spot Track, the deal that he signed was four years, forty-eight million, which was a similar deal that they gave Aaron Jones like three years ago. So honestly, really not much changed here. But when you break it down, the Packers can get out of this deal after one year and basically just pay him fourteen point eight million dollars. Fourteen point eight million dollars for running backs right now is kind of a lot, like relative to past years. But the cap has gone up. Twelve and a half of that is all that's fully guaranteed. So this could be a one-year deal or 12 and a half million if he doesn't hit his incentives now similar to Austin Eckler Josh Jacobs also struggled last year but there was other reasons for his struggles and for Jacobs it kind of wasn't fair and here's what I mean by that he averaged he led the NFL averaging 7.2 defenders in the box there's only 11 defenders on defense this means that more than seven on average were in the box for his runs and that just means there was no respect at all for the Raiders passing attack and Aiden O'Connell and Jim and G and Brian Hoyer for a half a game last year and you could also see right here on player profiler his stacked front carry rate so how many times the defense actually showed a stack front and weren't even trying to hide that they were showing a stack front fourth highest in the NFL it just wasn't op even possible for running lanes for Josh Jacobs so there was no respect shown to the quarterback Nader O'Connell who was out there for most of the time but now he's going to get an upgrade in quarterback in Jordan Love who a lot of people were already deeming a top 10 to top 7 to top 5 quarterback based on how he played towards the end of last year and in the postseason and definitely an upgrade in the overall offense the weapons and the coaching staff that is out there for the Packers on offense that's going to help Josh Jacobs and just a reminder he missed the final four games last year that's going to impact his numbers that's why he only has 805 rushing yards besides all the other factors we mentioned but in 2022 he was the most productive running back in the entire league yeah he had a lot of volume but this guy goes over 1600 total yards with 16 over 1600 rushing yards and then 400 receiving 50 plus catches i don't think you're going to see that again because that's just career high type numbers but i do think you're going to see him get back to that 13 1400 yard range with the double digit touchdowns now josh jacobs is a packer which means aaron jones isn't and aaron jones turned down six million dollars from the packers got seven million from the the Vikings and this kind of just seems like he felt disrespected maybe the decision was personal here saying hey I've kind of just held this team on my back the last year or two when healthy and you're not going to give me the extra million who knows so what we do know is that Aaron Jones still has it he was top 15 in all running back efficiency metrics when healthy whether it's yards per touch when you factor in his receptions 5.2 yards per touch that's kind of what he's done in his entire career just go out there and every time you touch the ball on average get over five yards either per carry on the ground or per touch when you factor in some receptions but the main concern for Aaron Jones and probably what the Packers were thinking is he's getting a little little bit older and he's shown some injuries in the past he's 29 years old right now 29 and a half almost 30 years old by the time the season starts with an early December birthday when Josh Jacobs is a couple of years younger so you might as well they're thinking hey for the same amount of money we can get a little bit younger and a more durable running back than what we've seen out of Aaron Jones the past couple of seasons because last year alone he missed six games with a nagging hamstring injury it started week one he came back got re-injured he came back he got re-injured and he also had a knee issue as well but as for him going to Minnesota I think this is a great fit for him you have Kevin O'Connell another great offensive mind knows how to work these types of backs maybe like your Dalvin Cooks even though he's like a Dalvin Cook light size wise into the offense he can pass protect he can pass catch I think he's going to be the RB1A here with Ty Chandler factoring in for 30 to 40 percent of the snaps now we move to the guy who was the first player in all of free agency on either side of the ball officially announced and signed by Adam Schefter and that's going to be DeAndre Swift who goes from Philadelphia to Chicago they add another running back to their backfield and they gave him a healthy amount of money here 15.3 million was the second most guaranteed money amongst any running back more than Josh Jacobs more than Tony Pollard more than Derrick Henry I think it's a little bit rich relative to those backs but nothing crazy Swift is still just 25 years old it feels like he's 26 27 28 he's still just 25 coming off of his healthiest season yet last year when he only missed one game played in 16 games now he did deal with an injury during the season but he played through it and that was some ankle soreness you can see right here because he was having a great start to his season the first eight to ten weeks Swift was one of the best running backs in football definitely for fantasy and in week 11 he picks up an ankle ankle injury and you can see he stays on the injury report for about two two to three weeks after picking up an illness after that so you see this low from weeks 12 to week 14 which you might be thinking in your head ah swift wasn't that great because of that low towards the end of the year it kind of went down the production due to some illnesses and injuries but now the question becomes for deandre swift just like it was for a former eagles running back in miles sanders who went to carolina signed a big deal relative to last year's free agency market and really didn't do anything there what's going to happen when you leave philadelphia when you leave that top three to five offensive line you're not running behind anymore that's what we're gonna have to wait and see now the falcons the atlanta falcons boy they did a lot in free agency they absolutely changed their entire offense and it starts with the obvious big domino in atlanta and that's kirk cousins being their new quarterback the new number 18 out there and he was top 10 in efficiency and accuracy last year he's been a great productive quarterback when healthy in his career and this is where it's all going to start for atlanta how is his health coming off of that achilles now he's a pocket passer so they're betting that his mobility won't really be taking any type of major hit here so they gave him that money and then they signed even more 
more players. And I mean, they just went off at the wide receiver position. They obviously already have Kyle Pitts. They have Drake London, a top 10 wide receiver draft pick from a few years back. But then they signed Darnell Mooney, three years, 39 million, a pretty rich contract for him. Like I said earlier, when you're an above average wide receiver, you get these mid-teens contracts. Rondell Moore, they send a trade force trading Desmond Ritter. And then they pick up some other pieces, Raymond McLeod, uh, Kadero Hodge. These are just some nice depth wide receivers in case anything happens to your starters. And it might seem crazy to see Darnell Mooney getting that three-year 39 million. Now, it's not all guaranteed, of course, but Darnell Mooney, when he's in a positive situation in his career, which has not been the case in Chicago the last two years under Justin Fields, he's been good. Fields was only really able to support one wide receiver, and that was uh, DJ Moore the past year to year and a half or so. But when he came into the league, Darnell Mooney immediately earned 98 targets and 631 yards. And then his big year, and this was when there was no DJ Moore and no major competition, but he did have a 140 target season. And now he's not going to be asked to be the number one receiver. Drake London will take that attention. Kyle Pitts on some plays will take that attention. So he'll get to go up and just play his role on the outside against a number two or three cornerback. So if Kirk Cousins is indeed healthy, everybody's going to benefit. Those guys we just talked about, definitely Drake London and Kyle Pitts, of course, are some of the biggest fantasy winners. And even B. John Robinson is going to be a fantasy winner, but they more reliable offense that should get to the red zone more often. Now, beautiful people, I do want to let you know that the pre-order for the 2024 blueprint is now available. This has been the third year that we've been doing this blueprint. A bunch of people last year found a lot of success and have already re-upped for this year. And this is going to include everything you need for your fantasy drafts this season, whether that's just for your draft season and rankings and projections and tiers and whatever it might be, but then also every single thing that you need during the year all the way up until your fantasy playoffs in December I'll be sending you waiver wires weekly rankings start sit type stuff every single thing you need the entire year for just 10 bucks all you have to do is follow this simple two-step process right now sleeper is the sponsor of the draft guide this year so you just click this link right here you follow these two steps it takes probably total a minute in general and then I'll be sending you your draft guide your blueprint the following morning you can also scan the QR code on the screen right here if you have any questions just let me know this is one of our really big launches every single year and allows me to do exactly what we're doing right now while also of helping all of you and if you don't make your fantasy playoffs for whatever reason even if it's injuries even if it's not the blueprint's fault i don't care if you don't make your fantasy playoffs i'll refund that ten dollars no questions asked just reach out this is a risk-free endeavor for you back to the free agency talk with arizona and really they've just lost some wide receivers marquis brown gone ronda moore gone when you look at their wide receiver room now and what's left it becomes pretty obvious that with that top five pick in the nfl draft they're probably going to pick a wide receiver most likely marvin harrison jr maybe malik neighbors because all they got right now is michael wilson who was their rookie last who showed flashes at times but nowhere near wide receiver one greg dorch who has been consistent for them and then after that just kind of a bunch of journeymen wide receiver in the nfl who are okay at specific roles but not really guys you want to rely on for your offense now besides that trade rondell moore for desmond ritter probably their biggest move that's going to impact them immediately in free agency was signing jonah williams to a two-year deal worth 30 million dollars and look jonah williams in the past has been solid he goes from now being the bengals uh, offensive tackle to the cardinals but this past year he wasn't great he ranked 68 out of 85 qualified guards according to pff and pass protection so i mentioned it earlier these average and maybe even slightly below average in this case offensive linemen and players are still getting these deals worth 15 million it's it's insane over to the saints we go and look not much really here to talk about for new orleans because these were their biggest moves on offense their biggest one signing cedric wilson the former uh dallas cowboy and also the former miami dolphin who only last year had in total 38 targets through 15 games they signed him to a two-year contract other than that backup quarterback nathan p Peterman, Stanley Morgan, a depth wide receiver. Their biggest announcement was probably that they're going to be cutting Michael Thomas, who really he's just been injured for three or four years now, but they're going to be cutting him after the post June 1st release date. So when I look at this, the first thought that I have is that there was no additions here and mostly specifically in the running back room. And that's got to help Alvin Kamara because last year, Jamal Williams did sign a two year deal. So he's there for one more year, but he's a veteran. He's like, what, 30 years old now. He really didn't do much last year. He hasn't been efficient. Kendra Miller dealt with injuries last year, a rookie, but never really flashed. I think this helps Alvin Kamara by far the most here. And when you're talking about guys like Michael Thomas, definitely not coming back. And who knows what the offense is going to be. And they're making all these small moves, but they're keeping Alvin Kamara are there and sturdy and no moves coming in to threaten his role i think sean payton's gonna run this offense through one alvin kamar and it would make sense to do that he's pretty good now heading to san francisco no major moves here their biggest move signing probably a backup quarterback and that backup quarterback was somebody who started last year out with the arizona cardinals went to minnesota and now it's gonna be a san francisco 49ers helmet for joshua dobbs as you can see right here he played 13 games last year ranked 36 in accuracy look this is nothing crazy by any means other than that they just kind of brought back whether it was signing or re-signing to quick one-year deal 
still some offensive linemen center john feliciano brandon parker ben barch nothing crazy at all right here look it makes sense they spent a lot of their draft picks they spent a lot of their capital on who they currently have their biggest move was probably just not releasing brandon Ayuk, which probably never was going to happen but there was some rumors of that after the season happened when kind of his girlfriend put some things out there brandon Ayuk put some things out there and then the general manager says no we want to have brandon here long term the seattle seahawks did trade for sam howell but that wasn't their biggest move in my opinion it was re-signing to a two-year deal their tight end in noah font and let me just put this on the screen no font's 26 years old and these were his athletic testing metrics according to the player profiler the higher the closer this is to 100 percentile the better basically there an absolute g the number one athlete in his draft class was noah font which is absolutely insane a few years back and again he's still just 26 years old tight ends it takes a while for these guys to break out we saw it a few years back two years ago with david and joku was this insanely talented tight end took him until he was about this age to break out maybe there's something there for noah font and if that's the case geno smith and this entire seattle passing attack takes a step forward we have done it beautiful people we have broken down all 32 teams the afc video is out there now this one is done for the nfc the number one key move that will impact their team and probably also that means fantasy football as well be sure to hit that subscribe button and qr code is on the screen right now if you want to get that fantasy blueprint early early earlier than it's going to be coming out later in the summer as well for a relaunch at a higher price just 10 bucks scan that now and take advantage of it. i appreciate you all a ton it's only march but we are already starting the content up for the 2024 season hopefully you're having a nice off season so far and i'll see you in the next one